We are back with the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video on this Monday evening. Hope you had a great Thanksgiving, everyone. Thanks for joining us as we kick off a new work week. A lot of people headed back to work and school with cool, even cold, weather today. And now we're focusing on snow for Tuesday morning. We'll get to all the details in this video, but first things first, yeah, pretty biting wind out there today, creating a wind chill that has been mostly in the teens ever since uh, the afternoon began, and we expect wind chills to be in the single digits as tomorrow gets underway. But the big weather story in the short term, aside from the cold, of course, is the lake effect snow machine, which is firing up as we speak. There are lake effect snow warnings out for the primary snow belts of northeast Ohio, northwest PA, and southwest New York. For, so from Cleveland right over to Ashtabula, over to Erie, and into parts of the Buffalo metro area, lake effect snow warnings are out. Winter weather advisories closer to home in Portage County, in Trumbull County and in Mercer County as well. Now, the weather's pretty low impact aside from the cold this evening. We have some flurries, but this is small potatoes, all things considered, especially what we have coming our way tomorrow morning. Not expecting too many problems on area roads this evening. But the instability has been pretty extreme over Lake Erie, and this will be the case tonight into tomorrow morning as well. And yeah, it's been unstable enough to create thunder snow. There's been some lightning. Not necessarily over the last hour or two, but earlier on this afternoon around Buffalo, several lightning strikes. Not going to be surprised if we have some lightning and thunder later on tonight into tomorrow morning in parts of northeast Ohio and northwest PA as well. Lake effect is, of course, primarily driven by the temperature difference between the waters of the Great Lakes and the air above those waters, especially up a couple of thousand feet. When you have a big temperature contrast, that makes for a very unstable atmosphere. Clouds have no trouble forming. Precipitation has no trouble forming. Now, in our area, this is mostly deposited in those primary snow belts in some of the hillier terrain of Geauga County, Lake County, uh, Ashtabula County, over towards Erie and Crawford counties in uh, northwest PA, into Chautauqua and Cattaraugus counties in southwest New York. But there exists, of course, a secondary snow belt, which typically doesn't see the highest amounts, but can see generally higher amounts than other areas. And that secondary snow belt gets down to about I-76, about I-80, Kent, Ravenna, over towards Newton Falls, the Warren area, even as far south as Route 224. You could kind of say that zone is in a secondary snow belt. When you look at long-term snow averages, it gets markedly lower as you go off to the south of 224 down into Columbiana County. But yeah, this is going to be lake effect, and after flurries this evening, we'll be keeping an eye all night on the main lake effect band sinking in from the north. It's going to take most of the night to get down into our viewing area, but before daybreak tomorrow, that primary or dominant band will be kind of right in the middle of our area, I think by 7, 8, 9 o'clock. So if you're a, a morning commuter, particularly in areas around and north of 224, so the greater Youngstown area, Warren, Niles, Sharon, everywhere in between, plan on at least the possibility of some pretty tricky travel tomorrow morning. Now, the highest accumulations of course, they're going to be up in the primary snow belts. There's going to be some double-digit amounts. Pretty common, I think, from the eastern suburbs of Cleveland over towards Chardon, over towards Ashtabula, Erie, maybe down to Meadville, and uh, certainly as you get up uh, towards uh, where I-90 meets Interstate 86 in southwestern New York, some double-digit amounts will be pretty common up there. Now, in our TV viewing area, if you're watching us from our television market, this is going to be a coating to an inch in most spots south of 224, Salem, Columbiana, East Palestine, Hanoverton, Lisbon, etc. Once you get up towards the Youngstown area, it's going to be pretty common, I think, for places to get an inch or so, two or three, uh, will be a possibility as well, and that includes Austin Town, and heading up towards Niles, and over towards uh, Hubbard and Hermitage, places like that, Sharon. Once you're north of Sharon, north of Cortland, Southington on north, closer to Mecca, closer to Johnston, closer to Bristol, Mesopotamia, Greenville, places like that, you know, kind of the usual suspects when it comes to lake effect, those are the places that you have a better chance of seeing more than two or three inches. You might see four, five, even six up there once you're closer to the Ashtabula line and closer to the Mercer County line as well. And so road impacts will be highest, of course, where we expect those heavier snow totals. But we don't want to focus too much on the exact totals because even in places that only see a half an inch or an inch, it can still be tricky tomorrow morning. You might only see an accumulation of three quarters of an inch to an inch, or even less, but if you get a whiteout and you get a sudden reduction in visibility, it doesn't matter whether it's a half an inch or an inch and a half, it's still gonna be impactful for you. And that'll be the case tomorrow morning. I think conditions can be very changeable, very variable. You can go the speed limit and all of a sudden you run into a wall of white 
It's a snow squall, and you have reductions in visibility. And this is the kind of setup that can produce, unfortunately, a lot of problems on area roads. We see some of our worst pileups sometimes on interstates in snow squall setups. The definition of a snow squall, after all, a sudden burst of snow, an intense whiteout, if you will. Not saying everyone's going to see this tomorrow morning, but some places might. Typically, whiteouts themselves don't last very long, but they can be super impactful. It's kind of the winter version of a severe thunderstorm during the warm weather season. It doesn't typically last that long, but it can be super impactful. And the impacts, I think, tomorrow will be highest in the morning hours. As we get into the afternoon on Tuesday, uh, the best support for intense snow showers will start fading and we'll be left with flurries for a lot of the afternoon. There might still be some residual, residual snow showers early tomorrow night. We might see a little bit of an uptick before the evening is through in our northern viewing area. So again, northern Trumbull, northern Mercer. Once you're far enough south, closer to Youngstown and certainly south of there, I don't think there's much going on in the evening. But in our northern areas, there might be a little bit of an uptick for a few hours in the snow shower activity, but that'll be kind of the last hurrah. We expect uh, skies to partially clear then later tomorrow night into Wednesday morning before clouds return during the daylight hours Wednesday as a warm front lifts in. It'll overall be a pretty cloudy day. Might see some sun before the afternoon is through. And then a pretty quiet day coming our way on Thursday. Pardon me, our next weather maker, it doesn't look like much, but this front, uh, a little area of low pressure will kind of hatch along that front, draw in some moisture, and I think a rainy day will unfold coming up on Friday. Unfortunately, in time for the tree lighting and the parade in Youngstown Friday evening. Kind of looking like a wet affair, especially early in the evening, I suspect. Certainly going to be a pretty soggy midday and afternoon on Friday. Smaller rain chances over the weekend, but that chance is there of at least a passing shower, particularly on Sunday. Now, it's kind of interesting when we look down at the northern hemisphere, kind of a, a top-down view, you know, at first glance, this is a fairly favorable looking setup for cold and stormy weather in the east. And I say that because of what's going on up here towards Greenland. A lot of times when we want to look for cold and snow in the east in the winter, we look for what's called a Greenland block, uh, an area of high pressure or ridge up here forcing cold air to come this direction. It's kind of like a roadblock or a traffic cop, if you will. But you can have all the blocking over Greenland in the world if the Pacific doesn't play ball. And it doesn't look like the Pacific's going to play ball too much. And what I mean by that is we don't have a big ridge out here. Another thing to force the cold like this. We don't have that. It's more of a trough in the west, so a lot of the cold ends up getting dumped mostly in the west and into the high plains for a little while and not necessarily in the eastern U.S. So it's not a super warm looking pattern, but it's not real cold either. Not as cold as you might expect if you uh, just looked at the blocking over the northern Atlantic. So bottom line for early December, there's going to be some mild days. There's going to be some chilly days, certainly, um, but it does not look particularly cold as far as the big picture goes during the first half of December. There might be some opportunities for more cold invasions as we get closer to the holidays. But at this point, we think the first half of December is largely pretty benign temperature-wise in our part of the country. And if you remember from our winter forecast issued two and a half weeks ago, overall the idea was we'd have a mild December. And I still think that'll be the case, especially during the first half of the month. Maybe things will change a little bit as we get closer to Christmas. Much more in the way of updates on the longer range and future editions of this video once we get through tomorrow's snow situation on tomorrow evening's Weather for Weather Geeks. We'll recap whatever happened earlier in the day and take a look at that uh, Friday potential washout and much, much more. Hope to see you then and uh, have a great night. Stay safe Tuesday morning.